What's up pilots? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today's video, um, I got a bunch of questions about how I calculate headwinds and tailwinds. So I personally um, am a math guy, so I use cosine and sine uh, trig functions. It's really simple, I'll break it down, um, but I also put in another way that you can do it, and that's just using a handy wind chart um, like the one the FAA, FAA provides you. So let's do it uh, with an example. So Step one, when you want to calculate a headwind or a tailwind or a crosswind, um, determine the difference between your landing or takeoff direction, which is your runway direction, and the wind direction. And my the biggest thing, if you get confused, is to draw it out. You know, uh, sometimes it can get confusing. Um, you flip directions in your head, so it's always better to draw it out. So here in this example, we're going to land on runway 33. That's a direction of 330 degrees uh, with winds from 045 uh, at 11 knots wind speed. Okay, so I said draw it out. So we draw out, you know, our compass rows and then draw your runway. So the runway direction is 330. So you're going to land in the direction or a heading of 330. So draw that out. So you're going to land in this direction. Okay, and then our wind. Draw where your wind is coming from. It's coming from 045. Okay, so it's blowing in that direction. So we're landing in this direction. We have the wind coming a little bit from our front into our face, just a little bit, and to the right. So now we know that we have a headwind and a crosswind. We're going to have a pretty big crosswind because it's mostly coming from our right and a little bit of headwind. Okay, so let's determine the difference between runway direction and wind direction. Again, our runway direction is 330 and our wind is 045, so we want this angle. Um, since the angle goes over the zero point, you can't just do um, 330 minus 045 because then you would get like, what is that, 285 degrees. Obviously, this angle here is not 285 degrees. Um, so what you do is you go from 330 to the zero point, find what that angle is, and then from zero to 45, find what that angle is, and then add up the two. That's just how I kind of do it in my head. So um, so from 330 to, to zero or 360 here, that's 30 degrees. And then from zero here or 360 to 45 here, that is 45 degrees. So 30 plus 45 is 75 degrees. So we have a total of 75 degrees between our runway and our wind. The next thing we want to do is we want to determine the components of the wind. We want to determine whether we have a headwind or a tailwind and what that is, what the component of headwind or tailwind is, and then what our crosswind component is. So to determine whether we have a headwind or a tailwind, if it's not intuitive to you, you know, if it's not directly in your face, it's not intuitive, is try to think of what is a direct headwind, what is a direct crosswind, and then what is a direct tailwind, and then you kind of can draw little sections. So a direct headwind would be wind from 330. A direct crosswind would be something 90 degrees from that. 90 degrees from 330, so 330 would be 060. That would be a direct crosswind. And then we would have another direct crosswind, 90 degrees the other way, which would be 240, and then a direct tailwind would be 180 degrees from 330, which would be 150. Okay, so now anything in this region or this region is going to have a tailwind and a crosswind component. And then everything in this region is going to have a headwind and crosswind component and everything in this region is going to have a headwind and crosswind component. Okay, so now that we understand that, now let's draw our vertical component and it's either this is either going to be the headwind or the tailwind component. And it's going to be per or sorry, it's going to be parallel to your runway direction. So, because we have a headwind because our wind is slightly to our face and we just we're in that that area right here that gives us a headwind component, our vertical component is going to be into our face. So we're going to draw the arrow into our face parallel to our runway. 
then our horizontal component is going to be our crosswind component. And that is going to be in the general direction of the wind, and it's going to be perpendicular, which means a right angle or a 90 degree angle with our runway. Okay, so we draw our vertical component and our horizontal component making a right triangle. So 90 degrees for our angle here, that is a right triangle with the longest side, the hypotenuse side, as our wind. And we have our plane here, so we are landing this way. We have our components drawn, and now what I've done is I've just changed the names. So where we had our vertical component, we now know that's our headwind component. Where we had our horizontal component, we now know is a crosswind component. And um, so, again, I mentioned that we have two options. We can use math to determine these components, or we can use a wind chart. So let's start with showing you how to do the math. Okay, so before we get into that, I'm going to um, review what cosine and sine is, what they are. Those are the two trig functions we're going to use. So you have cosine and then you have sine. So cosine of an angle, so COS and then parentheses angle, that's how it's written mathematically, is equal to the magnitude of the adjacent side of the triangle over the magnitude of the hypotenuse side of the triangle where the hypotenuse, it's always the longest side of the triangle. So in our case, when we draw our wind triangle, that's always going to be equal to the wind speed. It's always, the wind speed is always going to be the longest part of our triangle. If you look back, this is our wind speed. It's the longest part of our triangle. That is the hypotenuse. Now the adjacent side is the side next to the angle you are using that is not the hypotenuse. So if we come back, so this is the angle we're going to be using. Um, so the adjacent is going to be this side here, which was our vertical component or a headwind component uh, because it's next to the angle and this would be the opposite side. So now the opposite side comes into play when we talk about sine. So the sine of an angle, sine angle, is equal to the magnitude of the opposite side of the triangle over the magnitude of the hypotenuse side of the triangle. So again, the hypotenuse is always the long side, which is going to be our wind speed. And the opposite side is the side directly across from our angle. So to review, we have a sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go back to our wind chart. And we have, we've already found uh, the angle between the runway and our wind is 75, so that's our angle. And then our hypotenuse is this long side, that's our wind side, right? The wind, the actual wind um, vector. And then our opposite side is going to be the one opposite our angle. And then our adjacent side is going to be the one next to our angle that's not the hypotenuse. So not this side, but this side. All right, so then in other terms, in pilot terms, we have our wind, which is the hypotenuse side. We have the crosswind, which is the opposite side. And we have our headwind which is the adjacent side. So opposite side is crosswind, adjacent side is equal to headwind. If we had a tailwind, our adjacent side would be the tailwind. Crosswind is always going to be the opposite side. So opposite side is crosswind. Crosswind is always going to be the opposite side when we draw these triangles, whether we have a headwind or, or tailwind. So that means we're always going to use sine because sine deals with, hypot with opposite. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we are always going to use sine when we want to get a crosswind, okay? So we know the hypotenuse is our wind speed, 11 knots, okay? And then we know our angle is 75 degrees. So now we just need to solve for the opposite side, which is our crosswind. So again, we have to solve for the opposite side, we can just multiply hypotenuse to both sides. That gets rid of hypotenuse on this side because we had opposite over hypotenuse, so that clears that from that side. And now we just have hypotenuse over here on this side. So now we've solved for opposite. All opposite is is hypotenuse times the sine of our angle. So to put this in pilot terms, opposite is just crosswind. So crosswind equals hypotenuse, which is just our wind speed, times the sine of our angle, 
which is the angle between our runway and our wind direction. So we know wind speed, and we know the angle between our runway and wind direction, and then we can just calculate uh, using a calculator or on Google. So our wind speed is 11, our, degree, our angle between runway and wind direction is 75. So if we do 11 times sine of 75 degrees, we get 10.6 knots as our crosswind component. And that makes sense because our wind speed is mostly a crosswind at 11 knots, so it's gonna be close to that 11 knots. Now, if you are using Google or a calculator, especially Google, you can type in, just in the Google search bar, you can type in 11, an asterisk for times, and then S-I-N, parentheses, 75. But you need to specify degrees, and you need to make sure your calculator is in degrees mode as well. Otherwise, it's going to assume it's radians, which is a totally different type of number. So in, on Google, you can just write in D-E-G. So you can do 11 times sine, parentheses, 75, space D-E-G. That tells it, Google, that it's degrees, and then you'll get the correct answer. Okay, now for our adjacent side, that's our headwind. Now we want to use the equation or the trig function that had an adjacent side in it, and that's cosine. So whenever you're finding a headwind or a tailwind, you're going to use cosine. And whenever you're using crosswind, you, you'll use sine. So we're looking for a headwind, we want to use cosine. So cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse. We know hypotenuse, again, is our wind speed, 11 knots. And then we know our angle between the two, our angle is 75 degrees. So we just, again, need to solve for adjacent or our headwind. So again, we multiply the hypotenuse to both sides. That clears it from this side and leaves adjacent over here all alone. So we have hypotenuse times cosine of our angle equals adjacent. And then in pilot terms, we have headwind equals our hypotenuse or our wind speed times the cosine of the angle between our runway and wind direction. Again, which we've already found to be 75. So we do 11 times the cosine of 75. And again, if we're writing that in Google, that would be 11 asterisk cosine parentheses 75 DEG to specify degrees, close parentheses, hit the enter key, and then you'll get 2.8 knots. Okay, so now we have a headwind component of 2.8 knots, a crosswind component of 10.6 knots, and then a wind speed of 11 knots. So here, you know, if your personal limits on a crosswind are 10 knots, you may want to uh, find a different runway or wait for the winds uh, to, to cool down a little bit. So real quick, um, same, I've mentioned tailwind quite a few times. Same process if it's a tailwind. I just want to give you a quick example. Um, so again, when we're finding headwind or tailwind, we use cosine. Um, and then we use sine to get our crosswind. So here, if we had a tailwind, so before our wind was here, now we're landing here and our wind's kind of coming from behind us. So let's say we're using runway 33 uh, with winds from 110 at 14 knots. So we have winds from 110 again at 14 knots. Okay, so now our vertical component that we draw in line with our runway is going to be our tailwind. And then our crosswind component that we draw perpendicular or at a right angle to our runway is going to be the opposite or the crosswind. Um, so in this example, the only trick uh, tricky part is finding the angle between uh, our runway and our wind. Um, you can kind of get yourself confused if you think, you know, our runway direction is 330 and our wind is from 110. But if we did 330 minus 110 to get the difference, that would be 220. That's not the angle. We, this is not the angle we want. The angle we want is this angle right in here. So what we can do, instead of using 330, we use the opposite angle, which is 330 minus 180, which is 150. So we're going to use 150. So now we're finding, and this is 110, the angle between 150 and 110, which is 40. Okay. And then now all we have to do is, again, we're using cosine. It's a tailwind, so we're using cosine. We use our wind speed, 14, times cosine of the angle, which we just found is 40. And if we do that, we specify that it's 40 degrees. We get 10.7 for our 
tailwind. And then again, our crosswind, we would do the same thing. We're just using sine instead. So sine of 40 would give us 9. So crosswind of 9 and a tailwind of 10.7. Okay, so that was how you use math trig functions. If that just scares the crap out of you, then don't worry about it. The FAA has provided a chart. You can also make your own little charts to just quickly come up with an estimation of your headwinds and crosswinds. We actually have these charts to download and put in your kneeboard um, so that you can just look real quickly, reference um, the wind speed and uh, your angle, and it'll give you a headwind or crosswind. This chart is what you're going to find on the FAA written, so I think we should cover how to use that. So let's go back to our first example where we had a slight headwind and a crosswind. So we had, um, we were an angle between the wind uh, and our runway of 75 degrees, and we had 11 knot wind. So on this chart, it gives you the, exam uh, the steps. You know, it goes A through D. So step A is uh, the find the angle between the wind and runway. We already know that, that's 75. So down here, oops, sorry. 75 is right here. So 75, that's the line we're going to use. Sorry, that's not a very good line, but, ah, try and get this marker. Okay, there we go. And then uh, step B is find our total wind velocity. Ours is 11. So our wind velocities are these curves. So we're going to find 11 and draw, oops, and draw that curve here. And where it intersects our 75 line, that is where um, we are going to continue on to our next step, step C, which is if you want a headwind component, okay, so that's the vertical axis, you just draw a straight line from that intersection point. So again, we add a line of 75 to our line here of 11. Sorry, these lines aren't very straight. It's kind of hard using this big smudgy marker. But we would just draw a horizontal line over to our headwind component. And again, sorry, that's not the best, but I'm thinking it's about right in here. So it's a little bit less than ha uh, between halfway from 0 to 10. So I would call that headwind of 4. And then we have our crosswind, which you which is step D, which you draw a straight line down, which they've done in their example, from that intersection point. And then again, you see it's a little bit over 10, so that's about 11. So if we compare that to what we got um, in our first example, let's see here. We had, we had 2.8, so about 3 and 11, and 10.6 was 11, so we had about 3 and 11. Um, and then using the chart and my big smudgy marker, we got 4 and 11. So pretty close. Um, I like to use the math to get it exact, but you just have to know generally if you're dealing with a heavy crosswind or a heavy tailwind, right? Um, those are the key components uh, that will keep you safe. So hopefully you guys understood how I did these two different ways. A little bit of a longer video than I was hoping. Uh, but if you have any questions, please let me know.